the Lord. Just think of Jesus. And the joy of the Lord will flow out. The joy of the Lord. And the power of God will go through my whole body. And the love of God will descend upon me. And I learned that we can have a very close relationship with the Lord when we worship in spirit and truth and forsake all sins and say no to sins. The moment the sinful, sinful thoughts came to, into our mind that we say no. No, I don't want to. Look at that sexy woman. Yeah. Can you say that? When I see that sexy woman, I don't want to look at her. I don't want to have lustful thoughts. We want to say no because God has all blessings. And I want to share with you. Just now, you know, all these men come out and commit their lives to God, to the men of God. Here is me and my wife, it's probably hard for me to see. I'm committed to God and to my wife to love her, to have a loving relationship so that we can love each other and then serve God together. Now she's a teacher, so she cannot come. But she's all for me, and we spend time every day, every day we communicate, even here. Whenever I have a chance to get Wi-Fi, I will communicate with her. I am committed to be serving God and also loving my wife and loving my church, you know, all the people I minister to and train. I am committed to you too. I want to bless you. And I find that when I do that, you know, I give my life to Jesus, and I hope you give your life to Jesus too. I find that when I have this relationship with God, the presence of God is strong on me all the time. And I find that also when I pray for people, and what I want to say is, you can do that too. You can do that too. I've seen many people experience the Holy Spirit. I, I would say tens of thousands, because I've gone to different nations. I've seen tens of thousands of people experience the Holy Spirit. And also, I've seen many people healed or demons driven out, and you can do that too. So do not be deceived. You can do great things by the power of God. Can you tell the person next to you? You can do great things by the power of God. Hallelujah. And on that day, when the evangelist laid hand on me, I also said, not only that I want a relationship, I said, if this evangelist has this power to pray for people, experience the love of God like that, I want to be able to serve like that too, not just with the Word of God, but also with the Holy Spirit. That is God's plan. Not only with the Word of God, but also with the Holy Spirit to have power from the Word of God and from the Holy Spirit to serve God. And I find that when I do evangelism like that, I'm much more effective. Actually, I have many videos online. If you look for YouTube, look for Pastor Yip, Y-I-P, Pastor Yip. You see many of my videos, but many of those are in Chinese, but there's also an English revival sermons playlist and it's in English and also you can see a playlist called experience Holy Spirit and you can see that many people experience the Holy Spirit and also preach in English and help people to have the life revived and I want to say that you can bless people and many people call me from different countries and then I pray for them and they experience power of the, of the Lord even on the phone so I find that you know we can reach out to people around us and also reach out to people on the internet and we can serve God. You know, say that you want to bind up Christians and, and say, I just go to church. I go to church every, every week, maybe a few times a week. That's all. Say is very happy when people just go to church and be bound up and do nothing more. Do you want to do more for God? In Mark chapter 16, verses starting in verse 15, it talks about Jesus said, Go into all the nations and preach the gospel to all creation. So this is the great commission. And then in verse 17, he said, And signs will follow those who believe. Now does it say signs will follow the pastors? Does it say signs will follow the pastors? Who can have miracles? All believers, all who believe, the signs will follow those who believe. Let me ask you, how many of you believe in miracles? Please raise your hand. Thank God. Hallelujah, every one of you. Put down your hands. How many of you 
have prayed for people and miracles happen. Please raise your hand. You pray for someone and miracles happen. Please raise your hand. Well, we still have a number of you. That's great, but less than half. You notice that not everyone go out and pray for people. That's why we don't have miracles follow each one of us. If God wants miracles happen to each one of us, then you can bring people to experience the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, the signs, the miracles will follow those who believe. And what kind of miracles? In my name, you'll cast out demons. Yeah. You speak new tongues. And also you lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed. Some people say the pastors will lay hand on the sick. The pastors will preach. They will do evangelism. And one day you go to heaven. And God said, what have you done to me? He said, my pastor has done a lot. My church is a large church. My pastor has done a lot. He has prayed for many people. But Jesus said, I ask you, not your pastor, you, what have you done? If today you go to heaven, what do you have to present to Jesus? You say, my pastor, is that enough? You want to serve God. You want to bless other people. So Jesus wants you to lay hand on the sick. Lay hand on people to experience the Holy Spirit. That is God's plan. But some people think, no, no way. But tell, let, let me tell you, I have trained many people to lay hand on people. I just into Pastor Nicholas Church and trained the people there. Pastor Nicholas saw the people raise their hand and said, when we bring each other, we experience the power of God. Isn't that true? When people there lay hand on each other, they find that they carry the power of God. Now, except for some people who have still have demons, then you should not lay hand on people. Or you are in serious sins, or you are in serious emotional power, then you don't lay hand on people. And take care of those problems. And the pastor should have training that to help you take care of your, your problems. And then you start praying for people. And you'll find miracles will happen. And today actually we'll practice that. But first I want to explain what can happen when we pray for people. What can the Holy Spirit do? And I want you to write down these Bible verses. You don't have to write down the content. You just write down the Bible verses, and then you can look it up. Because you will use this in, in evangelism. When you lay down on someone and they experience the Holy Spirit, and they say, I have peace. And then you can tell them which Bible verse? John 14, 27. John 14, 27. So you can write that down. This is what most people experience. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. And your peace, my peace I give you. This is what something God will give us. But some people say, this verse says Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. But I tell you, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one God in three persons. So what Jesus does, the Holy Spirit also does. What the Father does, the Holy Spirit also does. And what the Holy Spirit does, the Father and Jesus also, also do. So it's a fact that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is one God in three persons in unity. So when you lay hand on people, many people experience peace. And a great peace. Even in the midst of troubles, a great peace. And also many people say, burdens go away. And this is in Matthew 11, 28. Matthew 11, 28, you can write this down. All you who are weary and burdened, come to me, and I will give you rest. And many people say, wow, when I came today, I had burdens. But when you pray for me, the burdens go away. So you can tell them that. The burdens go away. And then in Psalms 16, verses 8 to 9. Psalm 16, verses 8 to 9. Here David talk about how he has a close relationship with the Lord. And then what happened is, therefore my heart is glad. My tongue rejoices and my body shall rest secure. My body will rest secure. Now here it talks about God also blesses our body. Who created our body? God. Now some people say God only blesses the heart and spirit. That's not true. God also blesses our body. And when many people we pray for, when they pray for themselves, they find the body is in comfort. 
Now, some of you might have experienced this. You might feel a sway of the body. And you feel your body very light. And in comfort. That came from the Lord. It's from the presence of the Lord that you can have comfort over your body. So many people say, wow, I feel comfort. So when I pray for people, ask them, have you experienced anything in your hearts or over your body? And then they'll say, peace or comfort. And you too, you too can have this power of the Holy Spirit. And then Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. Here it talks about the Holy Spirit's economy to do what? To proclaim the good news. And also to bring inner healing. Inner healing. That He will heal the broken heart. And proclaim freedom for the captives. I heard that many people in this country now take drugs. And when people take drugs, they'll have evil spirit. On the other day in Pastor Nicholas Church, when we prayed, one man has evil spirit manifested. And we pray for him, and then one of the uh, worker who came with me said, Jesus said, he has drug addiction. And then I asked him, he said, yes. And when they have drug addiction, it will affect the whole person. And I said, you have to take care of this problem and come to the Lord. And the Lord is good. Now let me tell you, one time I prayed for a drug man. And uh, I prayed for him and asked him, have you experienced anything? He said, wow, when you pray for me, I feel more comfort than when I took drugs. I feel more comfort than when I took drugs. That the presence of the Lord will bring more comfort to the body Amen. than taking drugs. Amen. So the Holy Spirit can bring healing of the inner self. That many people are sad, depressed, and happy have insomnia, have family problems. Have you met people like that? Maybe some of you are like that too. Maybe some of you have depression. Maybe some of you have insomnia, have problems sleeping. But Jesus came to set you free. When you have a close relationship with the Lord, you can have peace and healing of the whole person. And many times we pray for people and people just cry. They cry from inner healing that the Holy Spirit will heal them. Also here it talks about the wall of gladness. You know, in heaven, do the people rejoice in heaven? Yes, they will rejoice in heaven. Let me tell you, anytime I can be filled with the joy of the Lord, the moment I think of Jesus, immediately the joy will come. And also many people are praying for also experience joy. But I found that in some places, the people, it's difficult to have joy. The reason is, they are bound by tradition. We cannot laugh. It's too untraditional to laugh in the Lord. But uh, the night before, we had a Holy Spirit party in the Nicholas, Pastor Nicholas Church, and some people start to experience joy. And it can happen to you too. When you have the joy of the Lord, what will happen? Then every day when you pray, you can have joy and then can bring healing. And also you can pray for people and they can have joy. But you see that I can have joy any moment, but any moment I can also stop. You can control it. It's not uncontrollable. So some people say, wow, I feel my heart comfort. I feel my brokenness in my heart is healed. Then you can tell me. I say 61, verses 1 to 3, you heal the broken heart. And also Mark 16, which I quoted earlier. Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. There it talks about signs, miracles to follow those who believe. In my name you'll cast out demons. And also you lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. This is a great authority, a great power promised by God that we have authority to lay hands on people and bless them. Do you want to use this great authority God has given you? Do you want to use that? Like the man who came in with, maybe they look like a sword to me. God has given you a sword. Do you want to use this sword? Do you want to use this sword? You can use this sword. 
I want to share with you, I have so many miracles happen. One time, a woman with cancer came to me. She said she has pain for over a month from breast cancer, and the doctor has diagnosed her to have breast cancer. And she heard that I went there to lead meetings, and she came. And then when we pray, I tell her to relax and enjoy God, and love God with all her heart. This is what we do too. When we pray for people, we don't just say receive. We say you open your heart, hunger for God, believe that God is going to bless you. And when she did it, she found joy enter her heart, and also she found something dark left her breast. And then after prayer, she found the pain went away. And then she had this, she was filled with joy, and then she went back to see the doctor, and the doctor said her cancer is healed. No cancer left. And it can happen to you too. I pray for di different sickness, people with di different sickness, and they are healed. God can use you like that too. Maybe in the beginning, slowly. Gradually, when you have faith, when you spend more time praying, you know, I spend all day long praying. Whatever I'm doing, I'll be loving God. Whenever I'm, whatever I'm doing, I'm brushing my teeth, taking a shower, walking, or even when I'm preaching, I think of Jesus. I like Jesus in my heart. I like Jesus in my heart. I love Jesus in my heart. That's already a prayer. And when I do that, I'm filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And you too can be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit and you will not be controlled by what happens around you. Many Christians are controlled by what happens around them. By the husbands, by the wife, by the children, by the bad, bad behavior. And they are controlled and have no joy and they think that oh, I'm always miserable, Pastor, please pray for me. I'm sad. I have all kinds of problems. Now when we look at the problems, we have no power. But when we look at the promise of God, you can do great things for God. Do you believe that? Yes. Would you say to the person next to you, we can do great things by the power of God. We can do great things by the power of God. We don't have to be overwhelmed by problems. Say it. We don't have to be overwhelmed by problems. We don't have to be overwhelmed by problems. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be used greater and greater by God. And this is my ministry, to raise some people, to know that you can do great things for God, to serve God. Let me share, after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I started to pray for people, and I found that people, many people got healed. The first time I prayed for a group of people in a church, and then I asked them, what did you experience? And one woman jumped up and said, my back ache is healed. And another woman jumped up and said, my shoulder ache is healed. And it was the first time God showed me He is working today with miracles, not just in the biblical time, but now, now. And so it's not great for people with all kinds of problems. I find that whatever problem they have, Jesus can come and heal them and bless them. God can help you wherever you are, whatever situation you are. You know, people come to us with different kinds of problems and come to you too, and you can bless them. I hope you have that faith. The faith is not in yourself. Some people say, no, I'm too weak. I'm emotional. I have all kinds of problems. Even though you might be weak outside, maybe some of you might have sickness. But in the name of Jesus, you can pray for people and people get healed. In China, we have one famous preacher called John Song. He has brought revival to China and, and in different countries in Southeast Asia. But he himself died of sickness. But he has prayed for many people and many people got healed. Now sometimes it happens like that, not always, but sometimes it happens like that. But it doesn't matter. Even when we are weak, we can carry the power of God. Amen. And then when I pray for some non-Christians, I notice that I felt the power of God go through. And I asked them, have you experienced anything? They said, experience peace. And then I said to them, the Bible verse John 14, 17, Jesus said, peace I give to you. And I said, this is what Jesus has done in you. And some people say, I feel comfort. And then I said, Psalm 16, verse 9 says, and my body will rest secure. So the comfort of the Lord has come to you. And some people said, my burdens go away. And then I said, 
Matthew 11, 28. That all you who are weary and burdened come to me and I'll give you rest. So these are the promises of God. And then some people, they cried for a long time. They felt the love of God. And then it's like Romans 5, 5. Now you can write that down too. Romans 5, 5. The Holy Spirit will pour the love of God into our hearts. The Holy Spirit can pour the love of God in our the love of God in the heart. And also in Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, which we just mentioned earlier, that He can heal the broken heart. He can bring healing to people. I've seen people in mental power. They came to me and they left rejoicing. And it can happen to you too. It can happen to you. Do you believe that? Don't just say, Pastor, please pray for them. First, you pray for them. When you have a friend who needs help, First, you pray for them and you see what will happen. Okay, here now I want to talk about how you can have a strong anointing of the Holy Spirit. This method of evangelism depends on having a strong anointing of the Holy Spirit. How can you have a strong anointing of the Holy Spirit? First, to say no to sins. To say no to sins, to turn away from sin. But many people say it's too hard. Too hard to overcome anger, frustration, depression, despair or lust. But let me tell you, after I experience the Holy Spirit, I see how God uses me. I see how God can use me to bless many people. I, and then I said, I want to say no to all sins because I don't want to let sins stop me. Let me tell you, when God sees our sins, it's like for us to see dung or urine. Do you like dung or urine? You don't like it, right? When God sees our sins, it's like that. He doesn't like it. So when we sin, God doesn't want to fill us with the Holy Spirit. If we sin, we cannot follow the perfect plan of God. God has a perfect plan for you in heaven, written in the book of life. God has written the best plan for you. A great plan. One day when we go to heaven, you see, Wow, God, you have such a great plan for me. How come I only live down so little of your plan? Let me ask you today, if you go to heaven today, are you satisfied with your life now? Are you satisfied? No. Or you say, I've done too little. We've done too little because we don't have faith in God. We don't step out. God has a great plan in you. So don't let sin destroy you. Let me share with you how I say no to sin. If I see a sexy woman, if it, it causes any, any lust in me, immediately I will say no because I treasure my life. And I will say no, I turn away and don't look at her, the sexy woman. Or even if I look at her, I look at her as a person, not as a sexual object. Now this is something many men find very difficult, yeah. to overcome lust. Or for many people to overcome frustration, anger, or depression or worry, but when I have problems, what do I do? I say, Lord, you control the whole universe. You can provide for me so I don't have to worry. So I trust God in all situations and I find that God will provide for me so I don't worry. I have gone through times when I use up all my money, but God will open the way. And in those times I will declare, God will provide for me, God will help me. Okay, so first, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, say no to sin. Can you say it with me? Say no to sin. Say no to sin. And then second is the Bible. We really believe the Bible. The Bible has the promises of God, has great treasure in it. The, pro the Bible gives us strength and promises, but many people look at the promise, they forget about it. The Bible said we can have the oil of gladness, but they live in mystery. They just don't believe you never get a joy. And they look at all the troubles. But if we look at the Bible, we know that we can have joy. Second, the Bible. Third, have faith in God. Amen. I know you all believe in Jesus. That's why you came this morning. But have faith. Deep faith in God is different. Let me share it with you. The Bible said, Would a mother with suckling child forget her, her child? Would a mother forget her son? Even if she forgets the Son, I will not forget you. God is thinking about you all the time. Yes. And in Psalm 139 verse 5, God is in front of me and behind.
behind me and he's laying his hand on me. God is loving us all the time and ministering to us all the time. You know, in Africa, there used to be slaves. There are many people who took people from Africa to America to other countries to be slaves. As a slave, the slaves have to do anything the master tells them to do. Is God our slave? Is God our slave? By no means. But God serves us more than how a slave serves us. He will follow us all the time. He ministers to us all the time. Even when we disobey Him, He will still speak to you. When we sin, does God stop speaking to you? He keep talking to you. Touching your heart yeah. to bring you to repentance. Yes. Isn't it great? God is always loving us. One of my main teachings is to live in the love of God. Every day you can say this prayer of grace. Prayer of grace is declaring all the love of God. Oh Lord, you are loving me right now. Now you can close your eyes right now and follow me. Lord, you are loving me right now. You are in front of me and behind me. You are laying your hands on me. You are blessing me. You think about me all the time. I'm very precious in your sight. I don't have to worry about anything because you provide for me. You love me all the time. Your love is so great. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus. I want to live in your love and enjoy your love. Now this is prayer of grace. Declare the grace, the blessings of God, the love of God all the time. Many Christians feel, I'm nobody. I cannot do anything. But God said, no. I'll put you in a high place. I'll make you an honorable person. Each one of us, if we follow God, we can live in the great love of God. So every day, when I wake up, I'll say, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm living in the love of God. Oh. <laughs> Every day I enjoy God. Let me tell you, we can enjoy God. Do you enjoy food? Yes. We enjoy the creation of God, but we also can enjoy the presence of God. That is what David said in Psalm 16. Therefore my heart rejoices. And my tongue rejoices, and then my mind will rest secure. His whole person enjoys the presence of God. So we have faith that God wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. God wants to bless you. So when you pray, don't say, God, where are you? God, where are you? I'm in trouble. Come, come, come quickly. You don't have to say that. God has already come. It's the problem is in us. You, you, we should say, Lord, please open my heart to accept your love and your help. You're right here to help me. It's very important. Listen to me. The two kinds of prayer. One kind is say, Lord, I'm miserable. Please come, come quickly. Don't forget. Actually, you can say it different way. Lord, I know you're right here. You will for sure help me. Help me to have faith. To trust in you only. And you will surely help me. That is faith. To believe that God really wants to bless us and fill us with the Holy Spirit and do great things for us. Do you believe that? He wants to do great things through us. So that's faith. And the fourth is worship in spirit and truth. The whole person worship. So the mind totally agree with the Bible, everything the Bible says totally agree, and also the will to dedicate our life to God. My life is for God. My life is for God. How many of you have dedicated your life to God? My life is for God. Can you raise your hand? If you dedicate your life to God, my life is yours. Please raise your hand. My life is yours. Please use my life. Please use my money. Please use my time. Okay, and, and then the third. Our soul also include our emotions, our feelings. Love God without feelings. You know, when I look at all creation, all the flowers in nature and water, this is a wonderful creation of God. Amen. Ah, it feels good. <laughs> Simple water. We drink every day. It's a wonderful creation of God. So when I think of God, I like God. Let's try this. Close your eyes, relax. And take a few deep breaths. 
Relax and take a few deep breaths. Relax your body. Do you feel comfort? Even deep breaths, relaxation will bring comfort to the body. God is wonderful. He created everything so good. So when I think of God, I would say, God, you're so good. You're better than anything else. You're better than anyone I know. You know, my wife really loves me very much. I, would, I can say she loves me more than her own life. She really loves me a lot. I love my wife, but I love God much more than my wife. Because God can bless me much more than my wife. So when I love her, the love is different from when I love God. God is above everything. He's so wonderful. There's no one like Him. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. There is none like you. There's none like you. Hallelujah. There's no one like God. So when I think of God, I like Him. I enjoy Him. This is very key to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we treasure God, we like God, we love God. God is above everything. Those, this is the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit. And also the whole soul. So you can try this. Worship God from the soul. Ah, ah, so this is a key. If you do this every day, really worship from the soul. But it takes time. It takes time to learn it. It takes time. And if I have a time to come again, I can do more training on this, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, now there are other points how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Also, follow the Great Commission. He'll fill us, he'll be with us. And also laying it up on our hands to help us. And also taking care of our to help us. But the main things are, first, okay, say it with me, say no to sins. Say no to sins. And the second is, the Bible. Bible. And the third is faith in God. Faith in God. And the fourth is worship in spirit. Worship in spirit. And the fifth is great commission. Great commission. And the sixth is laying it up on our hands. Lay it up. And then number seven, take care of problems in mind. Take care of problems in mind. Okay, now so what I do, what do I do in evangelism when I pray for people? I will listen to them, talk with them, and comfort them, and listen to them to their needs. And then I will share with them what God has done in my life, how I've experienced the Holy Spirit. And I say, are you willing for me to pray for you? To lay hand on you? They said, okay. And then when it says it's okay, then I will tell them, open your heart to God. Hunger for God. Your heart wants God to bless you. And then relax. And also I do the same thing. And then lay hand on Him. And after I have finished the prayer, you know, in the prayer, I, I would use more the prayer of the Spirit. I will say something like, Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, you're so wonderful. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Please bless this person. Come and bless this person. Simple words. Don't say too complicated words. But just worship from the heart. And then after the prayer, I will say this very quickly. Please say it after me. Please keep your eyes closed. Say it. Please. Two persons 
we like to pray for you. We want in feeling more spirit, you can come forward and then the press will pray for each other. And then what you do? Don't pray with the mind. You pray with the spirit and you just worship God. Yeah. And then one person pray for that person and you lay hand on the person. And then after prayer you say, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Now, uh, any two persons, you hunger for the infant Holy Spirit to come forward here, I pray for you. And then the rest will stand up in pairs, two by two, and pray for each other. Are you willing to try? The reason why to try is, like in Pastor Nicholas Church, when you try and you realize that you might already carry the power of God. I tell you, a number of you would already have the power of God upon you. When you pray for people, you see that they experience the presence of God. So I want to encourage you so that you will have the courage to go out and do it. Okay? Any two persons of courage to come out? I thought Africans have a lot of courage to fight the tiger and lions. And <laughs> come forward, but the rest of you can stand up in twos. In twos and pray for each other. Any two persons? Because what I want to do is to demonstrate praying for people. Okay, everyone can stand up. And then you find a partner next to you. And when you lay hand, lay hand lightly. Listen, lay hand lightly. Don't put pressure, don't put weight. And don't push, don't push. And when you pray for evangelism, you don't have to shout. You can say it softly because the person's new. Not, you know, it's new to Jesus. So you just talk softly and pray for blessings upon him. So choose a partner. At least I'd like one person to come up to demonstrate what to do. Can one person come up? One person who hungers for God will come up. One person. Is there one courageous man or woman here? You're not used to it, huh? Okay. Two by two. You demonstrate you, you really hunger for God. And you lay hand on the person. Okay? Not hold hands. You're laying hand on the shoulder. Are you coming up, sir? Great. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Congratulations. You're courageous now. <laughs> okay, now let me demonstrate. 